Thanks for the introduction, Emily. Um, so hopefully everyone can see the screen here. Um, this is just the web portal for our collection at the University of Alaska Museum. And it, the insect collection is our youngest collection here. And I'm the um, first uh, professor curator. Creator um, of insects in Alaska. And so it's a little unusual in that sense, in that being a very young collection started in the year 2000, um, over 80% of our slightly over 1 million uh, specimens um, have been collected since the year 2000. So we've, we've been doing a lot of collections building, and Arctos has played a really huge role in that. Um, I was very involved in databasing since grad school, and I've um, built a lot of databases. I had a, when I first started here in 2000, I had everything in a FileMaker database, and I knew I was going to switch over to Arctos at some point, but I wanted to kind of work with FileMaker beforehand and get ready for that switch, which was finally made in 2012. So since 2012, been working with Arctos and, and working with the developers to get um, to get a uh, number of features added that um, are very sort of entomology specific. Um, we deal with huge numbers of specimens at a time. Sometimes over a thousand specimens will go out in alone. Um, when those come back. We need to update the identifications and update the object tracking. And so we're, we, we barcode everything. We put barcodes in all the specimens that we can. We also, because it's such a new collection, a lot of our specimens are um, databased before they are labeled. So they're kind of almost born digital. Um, and this makes perfect sense when you think about it, the idea of, of sort of traditional entomology collection building of typing all the data into some kind of word processor to generate labels, putting those labels on specimens, and then having somebody type all that back into a computer later is an enormous waste of time. Um, so so we, we database before we label, and that has uh, led to massive uh, gains of digitized, digitized specimens. You can see on this page uh, just some background on our uh, collection, um, uh, some of the stuff I've just been talking about. Um, scrolling down to the bottom is where uh, we can get into some of the Arctos saved searches. So this is something I find really, really nice. Um, when you do a search in Arctos, you have the option of saving that search and then you can just send that link to anybody who, you know, in an email and they'll click it and they'll they'll end up with all the same records that were part of that search. Um, or you could embed that link as a URL in a web page as you're looking at here. So this first um, search link would go straight to the Arctos search page. Um, but uh, I have a number of saved searches here. Um, one of which we could do, um, let's start with uh, just this DNA barcoded specimens. If we click that, it should redirect us to um, the Arctos records in our collection that we've DNA barcoded these specimens. Now, I'm not logged in at this point. Um, I'll show you what things look like once we are logged in, but let's go to this first um, specimen record. Now, these these, um, we recently actually changed the name from catalog records to specimen, I mean, from specimen records to catalog records, in part because um, I was always having, I and others, um, had a number of issues with the term specimen as a synonym of these catalog records, because in some cases, uh, we have a lot of, for example, spiders in vials, and each vial is a catalog record, and this you could have 10, 20 spiders in that vial. So that's 20 specimens as part of a single record, what, what you'd call a lot instead of a specimen. So calling them specimens was a little misleading. And so now we've changed the name to catalog records. But if we go to this first one, 
this is a catalog record of a single specimen, um, this moth. Um, and it's a, uh, a few things to look at here. So here we have the identification of the moth, and there's, there's no um, apparent history. Uh, there is, if there was a history of multiple identifications, that would be visible there. Um, it, these are also linked to various publications because this specimen counts as a voucher in these uh, three different publications um, that are, are linked here. Uh, we see an image of the specimen, and um, this has been DNA barcoded, and that DNA barcode sequence has been shared with GenBank. So if we click on the, um, the DNA barcode link, that'll bring us to the um, Barcode of Life website page, which has a, a, a duplicate entry of this, of this data um, uh, for this species, or this specimen rather, with the barcode down at the bottom. Um, and we could go to the bin there. I always like looking at the bins. Um, but <clears throat> you'll notice also the parts. And this is something that entomologists often have um, trouble with. I had initially the idea of thinking of a specimen as having parts that require their own database entries. Um, this is more intuitive to mammologists who you know break a very large whale specimen to, into multiple parts and they all need to get their own little barcodes and tracking um, but with entomology we rarely do that but in this case you see there's two parts there's the DNA extraction and there's the whole organism that's pinned um, now if I log in um, you'll get to see a little more um, of the behind the scenes view of this record. And one of the things you'll notice is the parts um, uh, section of the record is now um, got a lot more information in it. Two things that become visible are the um, barcodes that are on the DNA extraction and the barcode that is on the pin. Um, so we really, this is something that a lot of entomologists um, which are which have been it has been sort of a, a late adoption of of unique identifiers on entomology specimens relative to other fields, um, and and though once we've started putting unique identifiers on, there's often this um, uh, expectation that that one identifier would be e equivalent to the catalog number, and that is possible. You could do that. But then you have a problem with the parts because each part needs its own barcode. Um, so what we do is we have uh, sort of abandoned that idea of making the barcode on the specimen equivalent to the catalog number. The catalog number is what we call the GUID up here, um, UAM ENTO colon 1072, or uh, I guess that would be 100,072. Um, and then the barcode on the specimen is this one down here, um, which isn't even visible to the public when they log into Arctos, um, which makes, I mean, that's been, there's been some discussion about that. Um, one thing you'll notice is that the barcode is copied up here. I've had, uh, in order to make it visible to the public, I've had our barcodes added as um, other identifiers so the public can see them. If somebody has a loan of our specimens and they want to do a search and find the barcodes themselves, they can do so, or, or search on a particular barcode, they can do so using that feature. Um, but in general, the barcodes are considered to be behind the scenes um, material for um, uh, curators and collections managers to use, but not for the, the public or the people who borrow specimens. Um, so that, 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 there's a lot to think about and talk about with that issue. Um, I barely touched on it right there, but, um, yeah, we've got links to the GBIF occurrence, so we could go click to that and see this specimen in GBIF. Um, it should be there, um, if it loads, there we go. So there it is, um, and... All the, there's the image, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, you know, we're sharing with, with GBIF and iDigBio, et cetera. Um, 
So let's see. I wanted to. Um, that's sort of a basic, um, a basic intro to some of this stuff. Let's. One other thing that is useful. Um, let's see if I can get back to that page. Here we go. Um, so this is a, a save search of of a different nature. This list of phyla classes and orders represented in the collection. So I'm going to click that, and it's um, it's one of the options when you do a search in Arctos. Instead of getting catalog records directly, you can get a summary of the catalog records, and you can summarize by a variety of predetermined. Whoop! I wonder why that gave an error. Um, and now it now it's working. Um, it should work. Um, so you can get the data summarized by a number of predetermined categories. Um, uh, tax, higher taxa is a, is a logical way to go if you want to summarize um, all of the orders that are represented in your collection or all of the families, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, it is a bit of a slow search sometimes. It seems to be taking a while now. I don't know why it's um, not loading. But um, what this should give us is a nice list of, of the higher taxa down to the level of order with links to the catalog records that belong to those orders. So anybody who wants to um, see whether your collection is holding material that they might be interested in, in borrowing or they just want to kind of browse the contents of your collection rather than do a direct search, the, you can make these kind of saved searches that should should work um, let's let's move on while that's loading hopefully it's not going to time out on us um, but let's uh, let's wait on that one um, all right so um, citations yeah I wanted to show a little bit about that um, if we one of the things we're doing, in our collection, because it's such a young collection, it's been fairly easy to keep track of all the peer-reviewed publications that have used our specimens and or used our data. That's a whole new, um, whole new way of tracking the importance of a collection or the usage of a collection. It's not just when people borrow your specimens and then cite those specimens in their publications. But now, since we're sharing with GBIF and iDigBio, people are downloading data um, and using it in their publications without ever even seeing our specimens. So um, we click this, and it'll open the list of peer-reviewed publications that um, our specimens have been cited in. Um, and you'll see there's, I could enlarge this a little, you'll see there's um, a little over 90,000 specimens that have been cited in the 88 peer-reviewed publications, and we could link to any one of these. I could, um, let's jump down to an interesting one that um, my grad student and I described a new uh, species. Um, here we go. So these 42 specimens, if we Go check those out. Um, these are um, type specimens of this. Uh, let's see, I wonder if some of these have media, yeah, like this one does. Um, so they're, they're not just, um, in this case, we've got a GenBank record, we've got an image of the specimen. Um, it's linked to the publication, and, and the link, the citation is called Paratype. Um, it had a previous ID um, only to species level in 2010, but um, it was described in 2013. Um, and we have all this other information down here. There may, no, in some cases, we link um, specimens. We include photos of the, of the habitats as well, particularly if we're doing structured sampling and we have, say, you know, a fixed number of habitats that we go back to over and over. Um, then it's very easy to link all the specimens to those habitats and uh, um, in photographs. You know, um, they'll all share photos of the of the habitat. Um, so let's 
right, close that. Um, and I wonder if that gave a timeout. Where is that time? This, this, here we go. Yeah, I don't know why it's still having trouble. Let's see if we can do it again. It did work the other day, um, and it works usually. Um, so let's see if this is going to work. Um, all right, so while we're waiting for that, no, there's another error. Let's try, um, let's try this one. I wonder, one thing is that we were, it were possibly going to be changing the, uh, doing some editing. Yeah, I think there's a problem with that. Um, so we'll save that for another time. But they're going to edit out the, or change the uh, frequent use of the term specimen, replace it with catalog number, and perhaps um, Dusty is working on that now. So, um so let's move on. I want to. Uh, those are just kind of a quick overview, but I wanted to uh, of some of the things that you know we've been doing and, and that we can see and, and do. But I, I want to get into some of the, the nitty gritty work um, with um, using barcodes, doing searches, this kind of thing. So um, let's go straight to um, Arctos search form and um, these various. Uh, panels can be opened and closed to uh, save real estate on the screen um, or to get into more search options. But I'm going to go into this part barcode field and I'm going to um, search on some some barcodes I've got here. These are some specimens in, in uh, vials. Um, so I'm just going to be scanning these in in my my barcode scanner is designed, is programmed to send a comma following the barcode, and this field will accept a, up to uh, 999 um, barcodes. And you may think that you rarely will need to scan more than 999 at a time, but quite frequently I find myself um, with a list, like I'll have students send me a list of barcodes that we're going to prepare labels for, and there may be 5,000 specimens in that list. So I have to do five different searches to get all those records. That's a mild limitation, um, but it's not too much of a hassle. So I've just done this search on these, these barcodes. I've found these uh, five records, and uh, here they are. They're uh, from this work we're doing on this volcano out in the Aleutians. One thing you can look at under manage is part locations. So this gets into object tracking. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, pop-up window blocked. I think my, I should have, um, oh, there it is. Okay, so there's the pop-up window of the um, object tracking. So those specimens I just searched have been scanned into this. Um, so each one of these is, is the vial, and it contains you know, the whole organism in, in ethanol. Um, we can close those, and you'll notice they're all in this unit tray. The unit tray is barcoded, and the unit tray is indicated as being in um, room 11 of our museum. But it's actually, that's incorrect. Um, this unit tray is, um, it's really in another room. It's in my office, and, and it's been in my office for some time, and it's probably going to continue to be in my office for some time. So I'm just going to quickly update Arctos as to where this unit tray is by going to what I just did, was I went to Object Tracking, Move Container, and uh, this is a simple little form down here, Parent Barcode. Um, we're going to do Room 32, which is my office, Child Barcode is um, the unit tray that these vials are in. And I'm going to tell Arctos to move the container. If we go back um, here and we scan this vial unit tray um, and search. Um, oh, why is no records found? I think I have to go reload this. I think it's, it's saved a... Um, 
save some of the prior search in there. So there we go. So there's the vial unit tray, and it's now in my, my office. Uh, so we just move the, of course, not just the unit tray, but all the specimens, all the vials that are in that unit tray have been immediately moved to their new, new location. Um, so let's go back to those original. Yeah, so once we've done a search like this, we, um, we can do anything with these. Uh, we can change their identifications. Um, but actually, I want to do an identification change, um, a real one for you all. So why don't we start with that one? Um, so this is another loan um, that, that I got back. And rather than go back to the search form, I'm just going to go into this um, barcode field up here, delete the contents, um, and enter um, the barcodes of these click beetles that have been on loan for some time, and they're now back, and they now have identifications from uh, a click beetle specialist. So I've just scanned those in. I'm going to do requery, and now we have um, a, whoop, now we have a new found set. I'm going to close that. So we have this newfound set of six records I just scanned of these click beetles. You'll notice that, that some of them are identified only as click beetles. Um, and three of them actually have a species level identification. And this is by me. Uh, no, four of them have a species level identification. Um, and it turns out that uh, lo and behold, I was correct. Um, and it wasn't just me. This was a DNA based identification. but um, the uh, specialist, uh, Paul Johnson, who, um, who identified these, uh, agrees on this species. So we're going to go to Manage. We're going to go to Identifications. And um, here I can change. It says Add Identifications for All Specimens Listed Below. All right, so here's the six specimens listed below. And you'll notice they have, some of them have uh, more than one part, um, DNA extractions for these that have been DNA barcoded. And um, I'm going to add the taxon here. I'm going to paste in that name. And I'm going to hit tab in order to ask Arctos to search the taxonomy file and make sure that name is um, in there and spelled right, et cetera. Um, but just in case you've not done this sort of thing before, if you put a, t a partial name in, um, it'll match it against, you know, if, it, if there's only one match of that string, it'll put in the full name. So you don't need to type the whole thing in. Um, the ID is by Paul. Um, let's see if, I don't know if we've got a middle initial or not. Um, oh, we don't have to worry about that. So Paul Johnson. So the screen, the field turns green once it's shown that it's accepted the data for that field. Um, the ID date. Now, I, if this was a recent loan um, or if it had been only out for a short time period, I would probably just hit uh, the return key and that would fill in today's date um, in the appropriate Arctos format there. But um, this loan uh, is an old loan. Um, so it was actually, these were identified in 2016. So I'm just going to do a year only date there. Nature of ID, um, I assume uh, Paul was using a microscope, so instead of uh, features, um, he was probably using fine features. Um, there were various other options you could use, um, molecular-based ID. Um, revised taxonomy is for when you're changing the name of something without examining the specimens. It's just a synonymy change um, of some kind. So we're using fine features. Confidence, I'm saying, is high because he's a world specialist on click beetles. Um, if we, um, so if I was doing this identification and I was using a certain key, um, I and that key was already in the publications database of Arctos, I could, I could um, link this ID to that key so that we we have a, a record we know uh, which key was used because as you're aware, um, some uh, classifications differ from others for the same taxa, 
So depending on what key you use, you may end up um, with a different answer. Um, so sometimes keeping track of the key is a great way to um, uh, disambiguate those situations. So I'm going to add these identifications to all the listed specimens. Um, and now um, it looks like they haven't changed, uh, but that's just because Arctos hasn't updated uh, this web or the web uh, browser hasn't updated. It's a little quick. So I'm going to click on that first one um, just so we could see it. And you can see it, it actually did change. It just hasn't been updated yet. So it's still saying elaterity here, but here's the species name there. Now, um, this is just for six specimens, but you can imagine I have, we have loans every year between 20 and 40 loans go out and come back. And um, these, can, these can be a low of about 5,000 specimens a year to a high of up to 20 or 20 odd specimens, 20,000 specimens a year. So we're scanning barcodes and updating identifications all the time. It's like a massive um, uh, amount of, of our interaction with Arctos. So this is something we do a lot. And one little important trick in case you start doing this, you do not want to um, do a search for specimens that you want to change the identification of. Come to this, if you come to this form here, and before you, you change the ID, if you open another browser window and do another search, um, Arctos, whatever it's your most recent search, is the one that's going to get the new identifications. So this web page may say there's six specimens being re-identified, re but if I did another search in another web page in Arctos, this, if it's in the same browser, if you do a different browser, you're okay. But if it's in the same browser, and you do a search and let's say you get, I don't know, 500 specimens in that other search. And then you come back to this page and you change the ID of the six, you're, you're not actually changing the ID of the six, you're changing the ID of the 500 you just found. Um, and that, I've run into that problem before and that's something that I make sure my students know. And I actually usually don't even let the lab techs do this kind of work, but um, it's, uh, it's an important thing to know about. Um, um, all right, so, um, and then, like, you know, so we, uh, this is part of a loan, so here's the loan um, link, and um, yeah, this was this loan that went out, um, and we can scroll down um, and see all the specimens in this loan, or we could review loan items, so this is something I do Oh, actually, I wanted to um, I wanted to do something a little different. Um, I'm going to back up a bit. Hopefully, this works. Um, oh wait, here we go. Where's, there we go. Let's, let's go back here. So um, I'm going to not just update the identification. This is another very important thing I forgot about. So um, when you're updating the IDs, now you can see they're all updated for these six. I also um, scan them into their unit tray. So I'm not going to mess with the DNA barcodes because those are in our freezer collection. But I'm going to um, move these into this unit tray that they, they're in, scanning the unit tray barcode, uh, deleting the comma because this, this field here does not allow commas. Um, and then I'm going to uh, click this button and it's going to change the unit tray that these specimens are in. So now they're all in that unit tray and it's going to update the um, it's going to update the um, last scan field. So we're going to go back into this loan that the specimen was in. This is something I do when I'm when I'm all done, when a loan comes back and I'm all done scanning everything. I click review loan items. And this brings up this form here. So these are all the items that are on loan. You can see most of them are just elaterity. Um, and this column here, last scan, is empty for these because this loan went out in 2016 and I guess most of these didn't even have any object tracking. Well, here's one. Here's one that was scanned in 2015. Um, but most of them didn't have any object tracking. So they're going to have their first scans um, when I 
scan these all back in. So I'm going to sort this column by that field. And you'll see there's a bunch from that were scanned in 2014. Um, and let's see. Let's go to the next page. I'm trying to find the ones that um, I just scanned. Okay, they might be at the top here. Yeah. Yep, there they are. So here are the six that I just scanned. So this is a great way when you're all done scanning everything in and, and you've updated all the IDs and you've, you've put them all back, you just check these review loan items and that's where I make sure that all the specimens are accounted for. And I'll change, you know, I'll change their um, disposition from being on loan to being in the collection. So that's how you, you do that here. You change disposition to in collection when disposition is anything. Now, in some cases, um, people uh, borrowing entomology collections will, um, or specimens will uh, keep some specimens, you know, with permission, right? So that we email back and forth and and say, okay, you can keep uh, those 10 specimens or, or whatever it may be, in which case the disposition, instead of being in collection, would be um, transfer of custody. Um, and, and then I would uh, update that record that it's now in such and such a person's collection. And that raises, you know, we do have a fair number of records in our collection that, that correspond to specimens that are no longer in our collection. And that's a whole nother ball of wax of what to do about those. You know, I don't want to delete the records. Um, it's hard to kind of account for them if you're trying to actually get a physical count of the specimens in your collection. Um, so there's, that's another like area for, for thinking and improvement. Um, but um, yeah, so, so returning loans, uh, scanning specimens that come back from loan, this is a, um, something I, I actually enjoy doing. I like seeing the new identifications coming in. I like seeing um, if there's any species that haven't been reported from Alaska before. Um, you know, one of the things when you, you click on this and you go to the, um, the specimen record. Um, and what? That's a bit strange. Why can't it open the page? Let's try that again. Hmm. Very odd. Huh. That is very strange. Um, let's just go to one of these. Hmm. This is unfortunate. I'm going to um, quickly try a different browser. I wonder if that's got anything to do with it. Um, huh. That's not good. Well, I'm going to... Oh, it looks like Arctos is... Yep, well, this is another problem with working with the cloud. Um, databases that are that you're interacting with through web pages, if you have an internet problem, indeed, um, you have to find something else to do until it comes back online. So this may um, put a kibosh on some of the other stuff I want to do. Um, but let's see. Um, I'm glad you can still hear and see me. Um, excellent. Um, just uh, Arctos is not responding. So one of the things I wanted to do was to show you um, a little bit of data entry, um, how we can um, create uh, hundreds of records and at once. Um, looks like uh, Carla says Arctos is working in Berkeley, so that's great, but um, we seem to be having a, a problem here in Alaska. Um, oh, okay, it came back. Excellent. Um, don't know what was going on there. 
but um, let's reload this. Yeah, just some kind of weird pause in the, thankfully not a lot of downtime. But what I wanted to show um, is if you click on the name, the scientific name of a species, it'll open up the taxonomy uh, record for that um, species in Arctos give you a map of, of the specimens, a summary of all the images that it's a little, a little like what you might expect at, at GBIF looking at a species page, uh, except this is just within Arcto. Um, but this allows me to uh, quickly click on all the specimens identified as this species. So um, that'll bring up all the records. We've got 159. It'll give me you know, the ability to um, map them in Berkeley Mapper. Um, this, this browser, I'm using Safari instead of Firefox, and it behaves a little differently um, than I'm used to. But um, so, we, we, you know, if you're unfamiliar with Berkeley Mapper, it's a super great um, way to um, look at your records. Um, you can, you know, look at this in, um, uh, you know, with with terrain added for a little extra topogra topographical understanding, we could do a satellite image. Um, but what we often do when um, doing uh, georeferencing is we'll use topo um, setting because topo maps, of course, gives you a uh, lot more names um, to work with. And zooming in on this, I can also let's see. Um, yeah, so this is a place mark showing that specimen record. If I could, I can click on this and they could go back to that record directly. But this red circle is the um, extent or the uh, uncertainty of, of the latitude longitude. Basically, we've estimated that this specimen was collected somewhere within this circle um, when we were georeferencing. Um, and because it was probably an old record, a historic record, um, 1944 exactly. So um, we didn't have very precise data on it. Um, but let's close that. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's just one one thing I do um, fairly frequently is is look at my my specimens in the taxonomy file, um, look at the, the taxon, and then go back to the specimens so I can get a better understanding. Because I'm, I'm not just interested in managing this collection of Alaskan insects, but I'm also managing a data set of Alaskan records. So we have a huge literature um, database as well that um, allows us to create a, uh, a species checklist for Alaska um, and that um, is, is something that I'm you know so we we we're a little over 8,300 species in the database right now and this may be the only state um, that has a kind of dynamically updated um, a, a, approaching uh, comprehensive state checklist you know, anytime we find a publication that's got mention of arthropods from Alaska, we, we add it to the database and we, they're not all georeferenced because sometimes publications have thousands of specimens in them and, and trying to get all those georeferenced into data, into Arctos is, uh, is more time and resources than we have right now. Um, Carl is asking, do we use geolocate? Yes, um, we do. So, um, Let's go straight to, um, wait a minute, let's go straight to, uh, we edit, go into the uh, locality, so I click that little edit button near the locality pane, and this is showing the specimen event, um, which has got details of, of this specimen, uh, and then the collecting event has 114 um, specimens, the locality has a, uh, 1,602 um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go to that one right now. Um, I'll get back to that. Want to do the geolocate, but I really want to show you the bulk specimen creation. Um, so let's um, let's do that. So uh, let's do that. Um, first, we're gonna go to data entry. Um, so to get to data entry, you click you click on data entry, and I'm, what I'm gonna do now. I mentioned that we database before we label. Um, and uh, before I even do anything with this, 
one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to go into localities and I'm going to find the locality that I know these specimens were collected at. Um, there's a place called the Peat Ponds here in Fairbanks, and it's uh, this is a to limit the found results. I'm going to limit the search to just localities that are used by my collection. I'm going to click Find, um, and this should find um, 19 localities. Sometimes if you find, depending on your search, you find a ridiculous number of localities. But so these are all basic, they're almost duplicates of each other because they're all collected very close together. But um, at the bottom here is one that I, I know um, corresponds to, um, here we go. So this is a photo of my field notes and we'll see this entry here, 2019 DSS 015. This is the um, specimens I want to create uh, a whole bunch of because I collected, um, uh, uh, what did I collect? I actually counted the barcodes that we're using. Um, 73 specimens um, there. And so I'm going to make 73 records very quickly. So it's this locality. I'm going to click edit, go into this locality. Um, right now, there's only three specimens in this locality, uh, from this locality. And they were collected earlier this year, um, July. I'm going to add a collecting event. Okay, so this is going to make a new collecting event in that locality. Um, I'm going to call it uh, Fairbanks Peat Ponds. Whoop, Peat Ponds. And the verb verbatim date, let me pop back to that, is 31 August 2019. 31 August 2019. Then I go in here and change this to 31 August and copy that over. And that's, oh, and then I'm going to do this collecting event nickname. So that's 2019 DSS, what was it? Um, 015. This is a nice little shortcut. I hit save. This is a little shortcut. So now, it says this collecting event contains nothing, um, but what um, I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a bunch of records that are going to link to this. So first, I'm just going to go in I'm back at the data entry field. I'm going to um, type in miscellaneous because this is going to search for um, a bunch of accessions we have uh, with that name. Um, I'm going to put myself in as the collector. I'm going to put myself in as the preparator because I mounted all these specimens myself. Um, and then since this is a bulk sample, I'm just going to call them Insecta. Um, this is one of the time-saving things is when you database, you just use a general higher classification ID that all the specimens share. Um, and then later, using barcodes, we update the IDs once they're, once they're labeled. Um, uh, and my confidence is high, the date of ID, they all happen to be adults, and the date of that, and my determination, I'm the determiner there. Now I'm the event determiner. The event determiner is a person who takes responsibility for the latitude longitude being correct. Um, and this is probably best, the debt date here is probably best uh, the um, date of collection for the um, for that. These were wild caught. Let's check out the collection method. It says um, down here sweep, beating, and dip net, soil and litter. So sweep, whoop, sweep, beating, dip net, and then habitat is um, well. There's actually quite a few habitats. Um, uh, I didn't write it down, but I know this site has a lot of um, willow and it's near a pond. Um, we'll just type in a few things. Um, pond edge um, and uh, leaf litter too. And let's see. Now, event nickname. This is where a 
If I type in 2019 DSS 0, what was the number, um, 15, and hit tab, it should It should, oh, great, that didn't work. Well, that's really annoying. Um, another way to do it is just grab this collecting event ID and pop it in there. And now maybe, well, geez, now it worked. Maybe it, it was working in the background, I don't know. Um, but you can see everything filled in from the locality I already created, the latitude, longitudes are already there, um, the collecting event I already created, um, so there's kind of two ways to skin this cat. Um, the event nickname is supposed to work. Maybe it was just going a little slow. The alternative is to grab the event ID, but that's more of a, a less permanent um, term or, or uh, string. You don't want to rely on, on these event IDs because they can actually change. Whereas the event nickname and is, is a code that you give it that um, it could be your collecting event code. It could be whatever. Um, um, oh, that's why it didn't match. Mary Beth, thank you. <laughs> Let's see if, uh, if I depick this, it should work. Okay, so now I do 15 and hit tab. Let's see if that works. I don't know. That's not what I'm used to seeing. Um, but let's just put that back in there. And, okay, we should all be good. Now, um, so part name, we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to type in pinned and hit tab. Come on, tab. Oh, what's going on? I don't know why I'm not getting a pop-up here. Full organism. It's something to do with my browser. Um, and, um, and then condition, these are all intact. Disposition being processed, one specimen per barcode. Now I'm going to leave barcode blank because um, I want to show you this bulk creation. So I'm going to save this as a new record. Okay, so I click the save button over there on the left. It did a little check. All the checks were passed. We're good to go. Um, how did, uh, question, how do you address a collected specimen that is reared to a different life stage later? Um, you can make notes or remarks about that, um, you know, that you collected it as a larva, and but you pinned it as an adult. Um, um, you could save, you could have different parts. You could have the pupil case, larval exuvium. They could all be associated with that specimen as different parts down here in the part uh, list. Um, so now I'm going to go um, do the really cool thing that we developed, which is um, you go to data entry, and this thing that says clone records by barcode, click that. And um, I'm going to go to, wow, there's a lot of people in there. Um, I'm going to go to those that were entered by me, or I could just do that accession that I, I used. But I'm going to say add barcodes. And what this does is when I hit save, that record was saved into the bulk loader, which is this table. It's not really in Arctos yet. It's in a, a pre-Arctos stage where you can still do more editing. And this clone records by barcode, um, it, if I had a lot, if I had entered a lot of records in the bulk loader, they would all be here and I would have to find the record I wanted to clone. But here's the record that I just entered. So it's, it's that 31 August Pete Ponds record. And what I'm going to do is um, uh, what I already did was I created, hello, I, these are all the barcodes um, that I want to enter. I'm going to quickly strip out the um, uh, hard returns and make them comma uh, separated by pasting them in here, doing a, a little uh, search and replace. Now we just have these comma delimited ones. I'm going to come back here, I'm going to paste those in, and when I create clones, what this does is it checks the barcodes to make sure they're good barcodes. It creates a clone for each one, and then it deletes the original. That's an important. So that's why I didn't bother entering a barcode for that original one. Uh, so if I create clones, now it checks the 74 barcodes I've entered. 
it says looks like this will work click here to continue and um, hopefully oh now it's, it's created a clone click to continue boom so now if we go back into this um, let's go to data entry if we go oh no we want to go to bulk loader browse and edit and look for my uh, records um, there they all are I just created 74 records very quickly um, so that's um, yeah that's that's how we that's how we generate huge numbers of digitized specimens very very fast um, and then we print the labels out which I could show uh, we don't really have time but I could show you basically I download I do a search download the data put it into a FileMaker database that lets me um, edit the uh, data information, the label information so that it fits on a small entomology label. And I um, just create a PDF of, of all those labels and then we print them out on a nice printer. Just, they have the barcodes in the data label. Um, the students put the labels on the specimens, put the barcodes on the specimens, and then we sort them taxonomically and we scan all the barcodes and tell Arctos these are beetles, these are flies, etc. So I'm getting uh, short on time here. I, I um, want to make sure there's enough time for people to yeah, ask questions. Um, so you can um, open it up. I assume, I Emily, that that's the right thing to do uh, about so now. If you'd like to ask a question out loud, go ahead and do so. And just make sure your little microphone icon at the top bar is turned continue to ask questions in the chat. Um, thank you, that was great. I liked uh, especially your little tip on um, adding customized save searches to the website. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's a great, great way to, I mean, I don't know why they're not loading right yeah, now, and but sometimes I think it's just it's, under um, construction. You know, um, pulling up working fine yesterday, thousands so. and thousands of records that can time out, but it is a good way to just see a quick summary of your collection. Yeah. Yeah, and those save searches are also quite useful. In fact, I'll show you um, my save searches right now. Um, there's two forms. There's these, um, you can get an archive save search and you can actually lock it and get a DOI for that. Um, and that would, that's useful if you want to put it in a publication um, because locked archives can't be um, modified, uh, meaning you can't encumber or delete any records from them because you, you're, you're locking them because you're, you're saying these are the, this is the data set that was used for this publication and you want to put that link in the publication, then people can click on it and go right to that um, the data, and they should be they should be pretty close to identical to the way they were um, when you did the publication. Um, but general sort of more informal save searches, I just have this huge list of them. Um, you know, I, I don't know how many times I've made these that, and I've just you know for various purposes, and I've sent them to people and emails, that kind of thing, um, and uh, like. You know, this, uh, let's see. Um, you know, there's one in here that you can quickly grab. Here's Dictiscus. Um, yeah, so here's, these are all the specimens we have in the this genus of Predaceous Diving Beetle. Um, you know, Great. Um, search there. Any questions, um, folks, while you're thinking? Okay, of yeah. The questions, I'm just going to paste that I dig by survey um, just take a minute or two to fill that out um, um, Maria, can you hear me oh yep yeah. um well just one quick comment on the safe searches if they're not locked and you add more specimens that fit the search criteria it'll add to your safe search so it's not a static thing um so that's one point but the other question i have was just maybe you could say just something um since we don't have much time, just really right. fast about how you deal with media, since obviously media are important for your collection. I want to just mention that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we have, um, 
media, you know, for basically everything we DNA barcode, we get a photograph of the specimen, like this example here. Um, and you can add, you know, media pretty easily by clicking this add upload and you drop a, a rec, you drop an image on there and you fill out a little um, metadata about the image and it'll link it to that um, cataloged item. Um, but um, if you want to add, um, if we go into the location form and go to uh, the collecting event, you can add media here as well, attach upload media. And this would, if this is ideal for like a habitat photo uh, of the collecting event, um, this will be propagated to all members of this event. So in this case, I guess there's only one. Um, but if you had 100 specimens from a, an event, they would all immediately have uh, that media uh, shared. Um, um, the question was, was that a drag and drop media upload? Yes, yes it is. Um, it is one at a time. Doing thousands of, of records is more complicated and you have to check the handbook for that. Um, it involves uh, FTP transfer to um, the, uh, uh, the um, Texas Advanced Computing Center, and, um, a little more complicated. Question, can you modify saved searches? Um, well, you can easily delete saved searches and make new ones. Um, and as Carla pointed out, if you're not, if they're not a locked search, then they're kind of dynamic. So if you have a safe search on this genus of beetles and in 2016, well, and you, you go ahead and you add a lot more records of that genus um, by 2019, that safe search is going to have all those new records in them. It's just, uh, it's not, um, it's not static, uh, as Carla was pointing out. Um, yeah. Um, there's our one specimen of that. Let's see, other forms of media. Um, yeah, the, the two I use the most are specimens and, um, and habitat oh, yeah. shots. Um, I could, yeah. Um, but the, you can also add media for publications um, as well. You can upload the, the publication to which is something I haven't shown the publications, but this um, this one is say a voucher in these two publications. We can go to this one here, um, and this will bring us to the publications database. And uh, this particular publication has got 4,240 specimens cited um, because this was talking about all of our DNA barcoded uh, specimens. You ever upload your um, as media? And uh, yeah. Um, I haven't been doing that, but Matt Bowser has. Um, he, he does that. So if we go into publications, and Matt Bowser is my colleague um, down on the Kenai, um, Kenai National Wildlife Refuge. Um, he's been doing that. Um, just that they have a small collection there, but uh, I encouraged them to use Arctos, and they, they uh, started using it. So um, let's see. Uh, identification key. Uh, these are all publications. I'm sure he's got some field notes in here. Um, oh, there we go. Here's uh, Bowser's field notebook. Um, so you can open that image, it'll be a PDF. Um, taking a little while to load. But I wonder if maybe things go a little faster in the lower 48. We have a lot of distance to cover up here in us in Texas. Um, Yeah, I do photograph all my field notes, um, usually in the field when I'm when I'm at the end of the day, and then I use those digital images to make sure that my lab techs and I have easy access to them. Um, 
but yeah, so here's here's his field notebook. Um, and all this information is in there. Um, so. Yeah, and you could link that to specimens, etc. cetera. Um, that are, like in this case, there's two cited specimens from that field notebook, um, which he's DNA barcoded, and he has, looks like he's got some media for them as well. Um, Oh, so this is an example of a habitat shot. Yeah, so these photos are habitat shots um, that, that are associated with the locality. So we're a little over time. Um, I guess we're, unless there's any other questions. Well, oh, thank you. That was a um, really great overview, Derek. We'll uh, sign it off pretty soon. Everyone else did. So, uh, Again, there's a link for you. And, uh, and, uh, you're welcome. All right, well. Thank you. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Um, all right. Thanks, everybody.